NCAA banned SMU's men's basketball team from postseason play and suspended Coach Larry Brown for nine games for failing to have control over his program. The school will also lose nine scholarships and be placed on three years probation. SMU has made the same amount of NCAA tournament appearances one in three seasons under Brown as it did over the previous 22 seasons combined. SMU is expected to be a preseason top 25 team this season and contend for the American Athletic regular season title. I am overwhelmingly disappointed for our players and the SMU community that the NCAA has decided to punish them as a result of the unfortunate actions of one staff member who provided inappropriate help to one of our players. The NCAA's new rules dictate as head coach I am responsible for every member of our basketball staff. I accept that responsibility but do not accept the appropriateness of the punishment. We'll move forward together to make this SMU community proud. A lot of people are calling for Larry Brown's job at this point, Stephen A. Should he be banned from college basketball? No, he should not. If Jim Beheim wasn't banned, Larry Brown shouldn't be banned. Jim Beheim obviously had his issues involving Fab Mello primarily. He was suspended for nine games. The school was docked 12 scholarships and had to forfeit 108 games. And Jim Beheim, although he's planning on retiring in a, in a couple mm -hmm. of years, will miss nine games this year. Mm -hmm. If Jim Beheim is still coaching and he hasn't been banned, then that should not be the case for Larry Brown. In the interest of full disclosure, Skip knows this, and for you, Molly, and my viewers out there, our viewers out there, um, Larry Brown, when he was the coach of the Philadelphia 76ers, is a man that I covered every day. I was the beat writer for the Philadelphia 76ers um, for uh, all six years that he was in Philadelphia. I covered them every day. He and I have remained close. I love the man dearly. Um, it's devastating because what he did, I cannot defend. There is no excuse whatsoever for the head coach at SMU or any head coach in college basketball to have an administrator assist in academic fraud. Whether he knew about it or not, it is his responsibility. And unlike it was in the 80s, Skip, you can speak to this more than me because you were covering all of this stuff back then and I was in high school. The fact of the matter is back in the day, they'd hold an assistant coach, an alumni member or somebody else responsible, but not necessarily the head coach, where as now, the head coach is the face of a program. But we can't ignore history as it pertains to Larry Brown. And this is where it gets very, very hard for me because I love the man. And, you know, I think he's one of, if not the greatest basketball coach I've ever seen. But I also happen to know that aside from academics, when it comes to you know, improper benefits to players, giving them a flight home, giving them money for a meal and all of that other stuff. Larry Brown always thought those NCAA rules were absolutely stupid and idiotic. So him violating that to some degree at UCLA, which caused the postseason ban in 1982, and then at Kansas after the 88 season, you know, before he moved on to the NBA in both mm -hmm. instances, I definitely can see Larry Brown violating something like that because those rules to him and most people are idiotic in terms of helping a player who's relatively poor, et cetera, et cetera. This is different. This is academic fraud. And what really, really came to my mind when I heard about this is the fact that unlike other places Larry Brown has been, in this particular instance, he was out of the coaching profession a little while, and as a result, he got to SMU, and the people that he hired weren't loyalists to Larry Brown. They were loyalists to whoever Larry Brown leaned on to bring on board, so they weren't necessarily his guys, so they didn't watch his back and look out for him, but he's still the guy at the helm. And when you take into account UCLA and you take into account Kansas and you take into account SMU, this is an entirely different matter. But it is still very, very bad. And I've 
I, as much as I love him, I find myself sitting here this morning absolutely disgusted that at 75 years of age, with all that he's been through, that he could find himself in this situation. Remember, he departed from Philly in 2003, you know, and all of a sudden exited Allen Iverson and the crew to go to Detroit and coach and immediately took them to the championship and then to a second consecutive visit to the NBA Finals. And some believed that Rick Carlisle was backdoored because Rick Carlisle was coaching the team at the time. Then when he was coaching in Detroit, although he has vehemently and categorically denied it, the Joe Dumars and others of the world in Detroit at the time obviously positively believed that he was politicking with Dan Gilbert in order to get the job in Cleveland while yeah. he was coaching the Pistons in the finals. Mm -hmm. Okay, Then ultimately we know the disaster that was the Knicks and Isaiah Thomas because Isaiah Thomas and James Dolan swore up and down that he was lying. I didn't know, you know how torn I was because I'm tight with both Isaiah and Larry Brown. So to be in the middle of that, that was just a, a, a journalistic mm -hmm. nightmare for me. And then after that, he goes to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Knowing that Michael Jordan is trying to build a fan base with the Charlotte Bobcats, Larry Brown literally was quoted as saying, in the midst of Michael Jordan trying to build a season ticket base, oh, I wouldn't play for this, I wouldn't come. Watch this team if I were the fans. We're awful. I mean, naturally, Michael Jordan called him in the next day. Michael Jordan didn't even fire him. He just looked at him and said, you know what time it is. You, you, you know. There's nothing to talk about because you got to go. Okay. So knowing all of this and knowing that you were out of the game for a while where you're sitting there living at Villanova, watching Jay Wright's practices, driving a great Jay Wright crazy because he loves Larry Brown, but good Lord, he was there every day. To turn around after all of that and to get this opportunity and at 75 years of age, with obvious Hall of Fame credentials, one of the greatest, if not the greatest coach that I've ever seen, and a wonderful man to me, I cannot believe that we are sitting here today talking about this. I still would not ban him for life, but that's only because you're not doing it to Jim Beheim. You haven't done it to a couple of other people mm -hmm. you could have done it to. Larry Brown doesn't deserve that if they don't deserve that. But I won't hide my disappointment in the fact that he finds himself in this position it truly hurts I hear what you're saying I don't know Larry the way you know Larry but I have followed him and covered many many of his teams and many many of his big playoff or championship games I have proclaimed him on this show the greatest basketball coach ever but I'm combining college and pro mm -hmm. is he not the turnaround master when you look on the pro level at what he did for the Clippers when they were in the doldrums, yep. and, and then San Antonio. San Antonio, and then Charlotte, and Detroit, and Philadelphia, and I can go on, I can keep going, but we don't have time. Right. Everywhere he went, good to great things happened like that. Nickname Mr. Fix It. Mr. Fix It. And Not so he, he went to UCLA when they were down. And he did not good things, he did great things. He took a, a Kiki Vandaway team with a bunch of freshmen on it. Kiki was in, I think he was a senior that year, I can't remember, but he was the older player. And he took them all the way to the national finals against Louisville. They did lose to a Louisville team that was just way better than them. But then he was gone and he left UCLA on probation. And he wound up eventually at Kansas. And he didn't do just good things at Kansas with Danny and the Miracles. He did great things. He not only took him to the national final against my Oklahoma Sooners, he pulled off one of the great upsets in college basketball history. They won the national championship. I think they were an eight seed that year. My point is, nobody doubts his ability to coach basketball. Mm -hmm. But I will say this. I thought from the start Larry belonged more in pro than in college I've basketball. That. I've okay, said that. so what happens? What's the obvious thing that keeps happening when when you're also an NBA lifer? When most of your time has been spent in pro basketball coaching millionaires, then you get in college and you say, "This kid needs a little walk around money, just a little cash. Come on, just some some Not cookie jar money." Okay, but but I'm saying that's that started at UCLA. Right. Oh come on, let the kid go to a movie on Saturday night. Let's give him. Let's give him bucks if a right. booster wants to give it what's the big deal okay in this case and I'm not putting words in Larry's mouth but I will bet you this is what he would tell you off camera off the record 
a kid, he's academically challenged. We're just trying to keep him in school for his own good, and obviously for the team's good, but for his own good, to try to stay, to stay the, the course to get his education. What's the problem? So we helped him on a paper. We, we helped. Okay, that's what he would tell you. And, and there would be some merit to that, except it's against the rules, right? So you violated the rules. And then you, you lied, even though he said within 60 seconds he changed his lie to the truth when he was being interrogated. Yeah. But, but the, the NCAA says, no, you lied. Okay, now to Molly's original question. Ban him, question mark? Fire him, question mark? In this case, as much as I like Larry, I'll tell you why I'm a no. Because I do not like to see these coaches flee the, the damage that they've done. He could go on somewhere else. I want to see him have to come back nine games into next year and coach the SMU basketball team through all the suffering that they're going to do next year. The kids are going to suffer. They, they can't, I guess they could transfer if they wanted to, but they probably won't. So the kids are going to suffer. The fans are going to suffer next year because they can't play in anything postseason. So there's not even any NIT, and this team is going to be pretty good. Yeah. Could it be an NCAA factor? A team that factor? was a, a program that from 1988 well, to yeah. 2012 won yeah. 46% okay. of well, 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 he's, Okay, he's Mr. Fix-It. We know he's that. Fix and, and if he would gotten Moutier, uh, obviously right. Moutier would now be in pro basketball, but, right. but still, if he got in for that one year last year, mm -hmm. look out. He, he might have made a run. He might have made a Final Four no run. Question. That's how good he is. But now I want to see him get punished the way the school and, and the fans and the players are going to get punished. Serve out your time. Coach the rest of the year. And, and, and to the point, which is why it's so hard for me to discuss this, assistant coaches do stuff all the time that head coaches don't know about. Boosters, alumni members, they all do that. And a lot of times the mm -hmm. coaches don't know, okay? But here's where Larry Brown can't shake this. A secretary, an administrator mm -hmm. was helping somebody with their grades. Mm -hmm. They're Keith Frazier. Mm -hmm. There is no way on earth that anybody can oh, put you, something you on a it. secretary. Sure. See, that's where that's where the nail is in the coffin. Okay. The, the assistant coaches, a booster. There's plenty of things that can happen behind a coach's back, but not when the coach's secretary, the administrator, mm -hmm. is in, that can. There's no way anybody's buying mm -hmm. that. So, bottom line, how much does this stain his legacy? I reputation? think it's a devastating blow because even though I didn't believe that he wouldn't go back in the pros, I think this is a reminder to the basketball world that the world that the word drama yep. and Larry Brown I agree. are consistently associated with one another. And folks in this day and age are highly sensitive sure. to that more than ever before. I think this is Larry Brown's last stop as a coach. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm he can hook on with an NBA team. I'm, just, I'm saying even an NBA team. That's why I use Maybe. the word drama because okay. it doesn't matter. All right. The drama because yep. they're going to remember. This reminds them of all the stuff that was associated with him in the NBA from Philly to Detroit yeah. okay, right. to ultimately New York and Charlotte. Okay. And it was supposed to be Cleveland in between. So all of that is what the NBA folks are going to mention or are going to remember, and we know what the college programs are going to remember. This is Larry Brown's last stop. Yeah. As I, I think it damages only the college because he's now three for three leaving teams on probation. He's 75 years old, Skip. Yeah. NBA's not going to go that right. You got young executives with the whole analytics movement. Yeah, but they ain't hiring a 75 year old coach. They ain't going to do it. Coach and Pop might bring him on as an advisor. <laughs> well, he I, might. I said an NBA head coach. Oh, okay, okay. Not as a head coach. No, I don't mean not, that. That's what I meant. Yeah. Really great insight and perspective there, guys, not to be cheesy. We move on to another guy at the helm. Is Derek Carr the real deal? Can the silver and black get back to the playoffs? We'll discuss that after break. Put your hands in the air.